I will show you 10 easy things to draw in Procreate when you are bored. These projects are easy and fun to do and are a super relaxing way to spend time with your iPad in the app Procreate. For each of the projects, I have added color palettes linked in the description, as well as reference and texture photos. So grab your Apple Pencil and make sure your iPad is charged, and let's get started with the first one. We'll start off by creating this cute sloth. I'm working on a canvas that is 2300 pixels by 3000 pixels. And to create this sloth, we will make use of the symmetry tool. To turn that on, you need to go to the wrench, then to canvas, then turn on drawing guide, then go to edit drawing guide. And here at the bottom, turn on symmetry. Then tap done. And then for the color, use the second color in this first row. And for the brush, we will be using the monoline brush, which you can find under calligraphy. The opacity should be at 100% and the size is at 30. Then zoom out a little bit so you can see the edges of your canvas. And then create a curved line like this. Drag in the color underneath. And then we'll make a new layer in our layer menu by tapping the plus. And I will tap this layer and turn on Drawing Assist so that the Symmetry tool is turned on on this layer as well. Then for our color, we'll grab this one, first color in the second row, and I will make another shape like this. Then drag in the color, and then again, we'll make a new layer. We'll tap the plus, then we'll tap this new layer. We'll turn on Drawing Assist so we can use Symmetry, then we'll tap it again, and we'll turn on Clipping Mask so that whatever we draw, it'll only show up on the shape here. Then for the color, we will use the second color in the second row. And then we'll create a shape like this. Make sure it's closed. And then drag in the color. Now let's make another layer again. Let's tap the plus and let's turn on Symmetry here as well. So we'll tap the layer, turn on Drawing Assist. Then for the color, we'll grab the third one over here in the second row. And now let's make the brush a bit bigger. Let's set it to 65% and make the eyes. Let's just make a curve like this. You can hold your pen in place and then use edit over here to adjust the curve. And go for something like this. Then tap the brush to get out of this menu. And now let's make a nose over here. Drag in the color. And then a smile over here. Then let's create two rosy cheeks by using the fourth color in the second row. And I make an oval over here. Hold your pen in place to create a quick shape. And then use edit here at the top to adjust it, to move it around. Until you have something like this. And then drag in the color. Now finally, you can add some extra touches to your sloth. But first, let's get rid of that vertical line. You can go to the wrench, to canvas, and then turn off the drawing guide. Then let's go back to layer one. But do make sure to turn off assisted. So tap the layer, turn off drawing assist. And then let's go back to this second color. And for the brush, let's go to the script brush. I have the opacity at 100%, the size is at 12. And now let's add some hair here at the top, some pointy shapes, and then drag in the color. You can also use continue filling at the top and tap in these areas. And if you have any gaps, just grab the brush to fix those. And if you want the hair to be a bit more pointy, then tap and hold the eraser to make it switch to your script brush and then just go along those hairs to make the ends more pointy. Finally, we can change the background color by going to the layer menu, tapping background color, and I'm picking that light blue or whatever color you prefer. And then let's also add a little bit of texture to the fur of the sloth on this layer, on layer one. We'll grab this third color and for the brush, we will go back to the model line brush. Zoom out a little bit and just add some strokes on its fur, following the curve of its head. Also a little bit over here 
and on this side. And there you have a cute little sloth. For this next project, we are going to create this cool 3D effect. First, grab the grid brush, which you can find under textures. Make sure your color is set to black and set the opacity and the size all the way to 100%. My canvas size is 2,500 pixels by 2,500 pixels. And now go over your canvas without lifting your pen. Now, if you end up with a tiny little edge of your grid along the sides, then you can go to the Move and Transform tool. Make sure you have it set to uniform and just make it a little bit bigger so you don't get that weird little edge. And then tab the arrow again. Now fill these squares so you get a checkerboard pattern. So drag in the color in one of the squares, then use Continue Filling and then fill the squares like this and just go over your entire canvas until you have an entire checkerboard pattern. Like this. Now it's time for the 3D effect. First, we are going to make a selection by going to the S shape ribbon, then set it to ellipse and make sure that color fill is turned off like this and then drag a circle. You can tap one finger on the screen to make sure that it's a perfectly round circle, something like this. And then here at the bottom, go to feather and set the feather to 20%. Next, we'll go to the magic wand and then to liquify. Set liquify to expand with distortion and momentum set to none and set the size to around 90% and then tap in the center. So you get this bulging effect. Go for something like this. Then go to the layer menu and then tap the plus for a new layer. And then for the brush, we will go to the spray paints brush. Here are the spray paints and grab the medium nozzle. Stick with black for your color. Now the opacity is at 100% and the size is at 80. And just make sure that your selection is still turned on. And then go over one side of this bulge with brown emotions, adding a shadow to one side. Now let's switch to white. So go to the color menu and double tap here to grab pure white and add a little bit of white on this side for a highlight. Then let's turn off the selection. Let's tap the S shape ribbon and switch back to black. So double tap here and then add a little bit more shadow over here because that bulge is also casting a shadow over here. And that's how you can create a really cool 3D effect. And this works with other patterns as well, of course. Next up is a one line portrait or not exactly one line, but it's the style of a one line portrait because of course we want to make this easy on ourselves. Now first import a photo in Procreate like this one, which I have linked in the description and then go ahead and lower the opacity of that photo by tapping the N in the layer menu and setting it to, let's say 35%. Then tap the plus for a new layer. And then first sketch out what you want your one line art piece to look like. So we are going to follow like the outline and just use your favorite sketching brush. This is mine from my basic set. I just follow the outline and create very simple shapes. We'll follow the hairline here. And over here we can add a very simple ear shape. And then for the hair, I want a nice flowing line. You don't have to follow the hair exactly. You can just create a nice flowing shape. So for instance, something like this, you can use your creativity. You don't have to follow the reference exactly. And then we'll, from here, we'll follow that hairline and 
the forehead. And then for instance, I want a nice line for the nose. Let's follow the nostril and go back in and then create a simple line for the outside of the nose and for that eyebrow. Then a simple shape for the eyelashes and connect this part. Then for the lips, let's think, let's go along this line Just follow the outer edges and we can go through here, make an extra line inside going to that cheek. And then we have a line here, let's connect it over here and then create that chin. And then we have the lashes here, again create a very simple shape. Then let's connect this to the eyebrow. So we're just planning our lines out here. So this is like one flowing line. And then once you have planned out your lines like this, you can lower the opacity of your sketch. Let's tab the end, set that to 30% and let's turn off the reference image. Then make a new layer on top of the others. And with your favorite inking brush, you can create the clean lines. I'll go to the inking brushes of Procreate and use the studio pen. And for the color, I'll just use black. The opacity of my brush is at 100% and the size is at 10. But you might need to vary this depending on the canvas size you're using. Mine is 2300 pixels by 3000 pixels at this point. And then let's try and create those flowing lines. And of course you can take breaks. Try to continue your line in a nice flowing way. And try to do this for all of the lines. And don't worry if you're not following your sketch exactly. Try to keep that motion in your lines. And try to make a connection between lines. Find ways to make long single lines To at least get that suggestion of a one line drawing. We have this one connected. And this one can be one flowing line. And now we have the chin here. So now we have our one line, we can turn off our sketch layer. And let's make a new layer underneath our line art. Let's turn this into something arty. Let's tap the plus. And then let's fill it with this color, fill our canvas. Let's drag that in. And now let's make another layer by tapping the plus. And then let's grab this color. Second color in the first row. Let's zoom out a little bit and let's create a flowing shape behind the face. You don't have to stay inside the lines. Drag in the color. You might need to tidy up some parts if you have a weird bulge. And then make another layer on top of this by tapping the plus. And with the other colors, with this one and the fourth one, let's create more shapes. Like one on the cheek. And then another one with the fourth color. And let's put that over here. And that's how you can easily create an arty piece 
from a portrait reference photo. Next, we'll create a fun piece with clouds by just using the selection tool. First, let's drag in a color. This ninth color in this row, let's drag it in. And then let's make a new layer on top. Let's tap the plus. And for our color, we'll start with this first one. Then go to the selection tool, the S shape ribbon, and set it to ellipse with color fill turned on. And then we are going to make the selections. And you can see that it immediately fills with that color. And just create random circles, creating this cloud shape. And to fill that underside, those gaps, you can set it to freehand. Just go over here, close your selection to fill that area. Then we'll make a new layer underneath. First tap layer one, then tap the plus, then grab the next color, and then go back to the selection tool. And then again, set it to ellipse and create these random shapes, these random circles, creating that cloud look. And we'll continue doing this. We'll make another layer underneath and move on to the next color, the third one, then grab the selection tool and make more of these circles. And on to the next one. First tap layer one, then tap the plus, and then move on to color number four. Grab the selection tool. And then move from left to right, creating these clouds. Then back to layer one, tap the plus, and move on to color five. Grab the selection tool and make more clouds. And just try to vary the shapes as you go, vary the sizes of the different circles. Go back to layer one, tap the plus, grab the next color, the sixth one, then go to the selection tool and continue moving upward. Back to layer one, tap the plus, grab the next color, which is the seventh, then go back to the selection tool and continue. Then another one, back to layer one, tap the plus, grab the next color, the eight, back to the selection tool and make another row of these circles. And then finally, let's add a little moon. Let's make a new layer underneath all the clouds. So tap layer one, then tap the plus, but then grab the 10th color, go back to the selection tool then make a circle here in the center. You can tap one finger on the screen to make it a perfectly round one. Then go over here to remove and then remove a part by dragging a circle inside like this. Then tap the S shape ribbon and you have your simple cloud illustration. Now let's create this simple envelope with flowers and a cute note. For this drawing, we'll be using my fine liner brush, which is part of my free treasure chest brush pack. If you go to freefromflow.com, you can get it for free and you won't just get a whole bunch of brushes, but also my ebook about color theory, which is also, like I said, totally free. So let's use this fine liner brush, set it to black. The opacity should be at 100% and the size is at 10%. And I'm working on a canvas that is 2,300 pixels by 3,000 pixels. Now first draw a bit of a rounded triangle. And don't worry, you can keep it a bit messy. That's part of the style. Then make a line going up and on this side as well. 
connect it to that center part like this. And then add another rounded triangular shape to the top. And then we'll add that little note by creating lines like this. And then you can either add a real message or just make these wiggly lines to make it seem as if there is text. Just some little squiggles. And then we are going to add some simple plants, some simple flowers. For instance, you can make a line like this, then add a little circle, add these tiny little petal shapes and these lines on that circle. And then add little leaves from top to bottom. Then let's make a bit of a curved line here add these petals and these tiny little lines on the inside and then you can add leaves like this just use your imagination or use reference from real, real flowers, of course, and create a variety of shapes. And remember, it's okay if it looks a bit messy. You can also go for simple fern-like shapes with lots of leaves, or a little branch like this with some small, some bigger leaves. Perhaps a flower here, which has these petals downward. And some tiny leaves. And you can also repeat flowers, of course. Add one with that circle again. And for instance, vary the sizes. And maybe one hanging here. Little oval. And then the petals around. And maybe some of these like branches with maybe some berries or very small flowers. These are nice fillers. Make lots of side branches. Until you have nicely filled that envelope. And then to add the final touch, we are going to add a photo texture. To do that, you need to go to the wrench, then to add, then to insert a photo, and then insert a paper texture. I've linked this one in the description. Now let's zoom out a little bit and make sure that our paper covers the entire canvas. Then go to the layer menu, tap the N here, and scroll up to multiply. Now to make this a little bit lighter, you can go to the magic wand, then to use saturation brightness. And let's turn down the saturation in case there's any color in your photo texture. And you can turn up the brightness a bit if you like. And then tap the magic wand and then you're done. Now go ahead and send this cute note to someone special. For this next project, we are going to create this cute avocado. I'm working on a canvas that is 2,300 pixels by 3,000 pixels. And we will make use of the symmetry tool again and the liquify tool. But first, we need to grab the monoline brush under calligraphy. And for the color, we'll use this one over here. First color. And we are going to use that to draw a circle. Let's zoom out a little bit. Let's set the size to 30%. Opacity should be at 100. And then let's draw a circle. 
Hold your pen in place, tap one finger on the screen for a perfectly round circle, then drag in the color to fill it, and then go to the Move and Transform tool, the little arrow, and make sure that Snapping is turned on over here. Then drag this around and make sure that you see that vertical orange-yellow-like line. Then turn the Move and Transform tool off by tapping the arrow again, then go to the wrench, to Canvas, turn on the Drawing Guide, and then go to Edit Drawing Guide to set it to Symmetry. Then tap Done, and then go to the Magic Wand and to Liquify. Set Liquify to Push, and you can stick with a 90% size and make sure that Distortion and Momentum are set to None. Let's zoom out a little bit and drag this top part upward a little bit. Now let's make the brush a little bit smaller maybe 70% and push this part inward a little bit. So you can gently shape your avocado. Make this a bit broader perhaps. I think this looks good. Now let's duplicate this layer by sliding to the left and tap duplicate. And then we are going to fill it with this color, second color in the first row. Let's drag it on. Then go to the Move and Transform tool. Make sure it's set to Uniform and make the shape a little bit smaller and place it in the center. Then we'll duplicate this again. So we'll go to the layer menu, slide to the left, tap duplicate, then grab this third color and drag it in. Then we'll go back to the move and transform tool and make this smaller as well. Place it in the center and then tap the arrow to get out of here. Now let's create the stone. Let's tap the plus for a new layer and then grab this first color over here and we'll make another circle. Let's draw a circle like this. Hold your pen in place. Tap one finger on the screen. Make it nice and big, something like this. And it's okay that it's not centered yet. Let's drag in the color, go to the Move and Transform tool and place it in the center like this. Now our avocado needs eyes. Let's make a new layer for that. Let's tap the plus and let's set this to symmetry. So we need to turn on Drawing Assist. Then let's grab white. I have it over here in the third row. And let's draw a circle. Hold your pen in place. Tap one finger on the screen. And create something like this. You can go to circle here at the top and move it around. So you have lots of control. Then drag in the color and then make another layer on top. Let's tap the plus, set this to drawing assist as well. So symmetry is turned on and I'll grab black. Then we'll make another circle on top. Hold your pen in place, tap one finger on the screen, make it a bit bigger like this. And then of course you can tap circle here at the top again, move it around. So you have something like this and then drag in the color. Then on this layer, we can also create the rosy cheeks. Let's use this second color for that. Again, let's draw an oval. Hold your pen in place. Use edit here at the top to adjust it a little bit if needed. Place it close to the eyes and then drag in the color. Then we need a little mouth. Let's use black for that again and draw a curved line like this. Then we need some twinkles in its eyes. Let's make a new layer for that. Let's tap the plus, grab white over here, then draw a circle like this, a small one. Hold your pen in place, tap one finger on the screen, then drag in the color. And then we are going to duplicate this. You can do that by sliding down with three fingers, then using duplicate, and then what you can do is go to Snapping and turn on Magnetics. That makes it easier to move it to the left without going up or down. And place it about here. Then tab the arrow. And now we just need a little bit of shading. First, let's make a drop shadow for our entire avocado. But before we do that, let's also turn off our vertical line. Let's go to the wrench, to canvas, and turn off the drawing guide. Now let's go back to our layer menu and duplicate the bottom layer. Let's slide to the left, tap duplicate, tap the bottom one, 
then grab this gray, this third color, and drag it onto the shape. Then go to the Move and Transform tool and move it to the left and downward. So you get something like this. Then we'll do something similar for the stone. Let's go to layer four here, slide to the left, tab duplicate, go to the bottom one. Then we are going to fill that with this color, the second one, drag it in. Then go to the move and transform tool, the little arrow, and move it down and to the left like this. And then to change the color a bit, we can go to the layer menu, tap the N, and change the layer blending mode to multiply, which is great for shadows. And let's slide it to 50%. Then let's make a shadow on the stone. So first tap layer four, then tap the plus, then set this layer to clipping mask so that whatever we do, it'll only show up on this circle here. And for our color, we'll grab the first color. And let's also set the layer blending mode of this layer to multiply by tapping the end and scrolling up to multiply. Then with our monoline brush, which we still have selected, we're going to draw another circle. So draw a circle. You won't be able to see it entirely since we are using clipping mask. Tap one finger on the screen for a perfectly round circle and go for something like this. Of course, you can also tap circle here at the top if you need to move it around. Go for something like this and then drag in the color in this area. Now to make this a bit more subtle, you can go to the layer menu, tab the M and slide the opacity to 50%. And there's our cute avocado. Next, let me show you how you can easily create a paper cutout effect. First, we are going to drag in this first color onto our canvas. Let's drag it on, but of course you can use any color you like. My canvas is 2,300 pixels by 3,000 pixels, by the way. And now let's make a new layer on top of this one. Let's tap the plus, and then let's grab this color over here. And then we are going to create a pretty random shape. I'm using the model line brush, but of course you can also use another brush. And I'm going to make a flowing motion around the canvas and create a closed shape and then drag in the color on the outside. Then we'll make a new layer underneath this one. So tab layer one, tap the plus, and then move on to this color. We will move from right to left. And let's make another shape. And you can go on the outside of that lighter blue shape. Just make sure you close the shape and then drag in the color. And we will continue doing this. So we'll go back to layer one, tap the plus, and move on to this color and create another shape. Close it, drag in the color and continue. Tap layer one, tap the plus, go to the next color, the fourth one in this row and make a nice flowing motion drag in the color, tab layer one, tab the plus, move on to this color, third color, create another shape, drag in the color, and then finally tab layer one again, tab the plus, and grab the second color for a final little shape here. Drag in the color, of course, you can make it a bit more flowing and adjust it a little bit. And now it's time to add a shadow effect. To do that, we are going to duplicate each of these layers except for the bottom one. To do that, you can slide to the left and tap duplicate on each of these layers. And then tap the bottom layer of a layer of paper and then grab this color over here the eight color and drag it on there. So now in the layer menu, you can see that the bottom one is dark. I will do that for each of the bottom layers. So you don't see anything on your canvas, but when you look at your layer menu, you will see that the bottom ones are a dark blue. So now all of these layers are blue and now we are going to blur them. 
To do that, you need to go to the magic wand, then to Gaussian Blur, then slide to the right, and let's go for 12%. And do that for each of the dark blue layers. So every time you go to Gaussian Blur, and set it to 12% by sliding your pen to the right on your screen. Until you have blurred every layer, or every dark layer, of course. Then this one. Now that we have blurred them all, we can select them all by sliding to the right on each of the dark layers, then go to the Move and Transform tool, make sure that Snapping and Magnetics are turned off, and then move these shadows. You move them around like this, and I'll go for to the left and downward, so something like this. Now next, to add some thickness to this paper, you can add another effect by duplicating the top layers again, so slide to the left, tap Duplicate on each of those layers, Make sure you duplicate the layers that aren't blurred. And then for the bottom version, we will add this color, the ninth color. And just drag it on there for each of these bottom layers. So you're not seeing anything on the canvas, but you are seeing something in the layer menu. Then let's select all of these layers by sliding to the right on those white layers. Then go to the Move and Transform tool again, and move it in the opposite direction of the shadow. And just a little bit, so you get a slight effect, as if this is paper that has some thickness. Then finally, we can add a photo texture, just like we did with our envelope with flowers. First go to the top layer, then to the wrench, then to Add, then to Insert a Photo, add the photo texture, Make it bigger so it fits the canvas. Then go to the layer menu, tab the N, scroll up to multiply. And if you like, you can go to the magic wand again to use saturation brightness, lower the saturation, turn up the brightness a bit. And you can also play around with the opacity in the layer menu by tapping the M and making the effect more subtle, for instance by setting it to 70%. And that's how you can create a paper cutout effect in Procreate with which you can vary endlessly. If you are enjoying these projects so far, then be sure to check out my Patreon page because that's where you can have a whole lot more Procreate drawing fun. I have more than 150 tutorials there and they range from beginner levels to more advanced levels. So over there you can strengthen your drawing muscles and have fun creating these lovely projects at the same time. So I'm looking forward to seeing you there. But now let's move on to the next project. Now we are going to create the simple watercolor cat. To do that, we are going to use the round watery brush, which is also part of my free Procreate treasure chest brush pack. Now for the color, we are going to start with this one first color. The opacity of the brush is at 100% and let's set the size to, let's say 60. And then first let's make a round shape for the head. Don't lift your pen. And then a shape for the body, which is a bit like a cone shape. The canvas I'm working on, by the way, is 2300 pixels by 3000 pixels. Let's make the brush a little bit smaller now. Let's go for 40%. And let's refine the shape of this cat with that rounded head and a bit of a cone-shaped body. And I'm focusing the color on the outside, keeping the inside a bit lighter. And with this brush, every time you lift your pen, it'll recharge with new paint. But while you have your pen on the screen, you can mix colors that are there, move the paint around. Now let's make the brush even smaller. 20% refining the outer shape, lifting your pen a bit more often in this stage, and let's also create a tail. 
So a swooping shape, like an S. And we can also add tiny little ears, like these triangular shapes at the top of its head. So we're really, we're creating a very simple shape here. Very simple base for our watercolor cat. Make the bottom part a little bit darker. And then let's grab a darker color. The second color in the, well, the only row that we have. And now let's make these upward lines here for its legs. So just these slightly diagonal lines upward. And then we can also go along the outside, add a few of these dabs to create a bit of a pattern on its fur. Very gently. Also on the tail. And let's make a circle here and here. That's where the eyes will be later. And a little line for its nose and mouth. A very simple shape like this. Then let's grab an even darker color. Let's grab this one, third color, and make the brush a little bit smaller. Let's go for 10% and work on that pattern some more. We're going to make these lines on the outside. And remember, it can be messy. Don't worry. This is a fun, messy watercolor piece. And remember that every time you lift your pen, you will get more paint, new, fresh paint. Also add these lines on the legs. A little bit inside the ears. And of course, along the tail. And to blend the colors a bit, you can go back to the second color and just go over those lines. And that way you can blend it a bit with the rest of the fur. And build layer upon layer of color. Then let's also use this color, fourth color, for some more color variety and some extra colors of these stripes. Of course, you can also give your cat a different pattern. Perhaps yours has patches or spots. Or you can make a whole family of cats. Or make yours look like your own cat. I just want to go back to this color, that first color, make the brush a little bit bigger, 20%, and mix the outer areas just a little bit. And I'm keeping that center part pretty light. So this looks nice, nice and blended and watery. What we'll do now is add a layer mask to this layer. We'll tap the layer and add a mask. And then with the color set to black, you can double tap here to grab black. We are going to make white parts for the eye. Let's make the brush smaller, 8%. Make one circle over here and one over here. Those will be its eyes. And over here, Underneath, you can 
also make that white for the muzzle. And then let's also add some dabs here on the front of its body for some light fur. Do some dabs that will nicely add some texture. Maybe make this a little bit more rounded. These are like three little circles, two at the top, one at the bottom. By the way, this brush is part of my watercolor brush pack, which I think you might like. It comes with a special tutorial video in which we will create this cute little flower shop. And just for you, I have added a link in the description so you can grab it with a special discount. Now let's continue and add the final details to our cat. Let's make a new layer on top of this one by tapping the plus. And then we'll grab the fine liner brush from the treasure chest brush pack. Fine liner over here. And for the color, we'll use this one. Fifth color, it's just black. And we'll add the pupils to the eyes. And if you make them look really small, then your cat will look more like startled. So try to play with that. And here we'll make a little nose and a slight smile. He looks a little bit derpy, but overall, I think he's happy. Or maybe he doesn't even know how he's feeling. He looks like he doesn't know a lot. Let's add the whiskers. And that's how you can easily create a watercolor, pretty derpy looking cat. For our next piece, we are going to create something stylized, which would probably look great hanging on your wall. We will use the script brush for this, which you can find under calligraphy. And for our first color, we'll use this one. First color in the second row and the opacity of your brush should be at 100%. I will set the size to 40% and let's make a random shape in this corner and drag in the color. Now we'll make another shape with this color, second color. Let's put that in this corner, but of course you can create your own shapes. Just keep it a bit random and create flowing shapes. Grab the third color here. I'll create a shape like this. And then I'll grab the first color to create a shape over here. Drag in the color. Then on a new layer, let's tap the plus. I'll make another shape first with this fourth color in the first row. I'd like to make a pink shape here. And then let's make another layer by tapping the plus and then use the second color in the second row for a final shape over here. Drag in the color. And now for these two shapes, I'd like to add a pattern. To do that, let's go to this layer first. Let's tap it and then use a mask. And then we'll go to my treasure chest brush pack. And we are going to find a pattern brush. We are going to use the signs brush over here. Now the opacity should be at 100% and I have the size set to 47%. And then go over to shape to add this pattern. Then go to the layer mask, tap it and use invert. Or of course you can also stick with the way it looked just now. Because for these stylized pieces, you can vary endlessly. We're going to do the same for this layer, layer three, tap it, add a mask. Then for the brush, we will use the Campy brush. This one is also set to 100% opacity and the size is set to 13%. And now let's go over here, add this pattern without lifting your pen, then go to the layer mask, tap it and use invert. Then let's go to layer one. Let's also add a layer mask there. But to these shapes, I'd like to add a texture. So let's grab a different brush. Let's use the, the cookie brush. Let's stick with black. The opacity is at 100% and the size is at 100% as well. Now let's just go over here very gently and add this texture to these shapes. And of course you can make multiple strokes if you want the texture to be more visible. 
I'll go for something like this. Then we'll make a new layer on top of all the others. Let's tap the plus. For the color, we'll grab this one, third color in the second row. And for the brush, we will go back to the script brush under calligraphy. The opacity should be at 100% and the size at 12. And now let's make a flowing shape like this. And then add some side branches. So we are going to create a plant like shape. And at the ends, we will create these leaf shapes. But of course, you can also go for a different type of plant. Perhaps yours has rounded leaves. Or perhaps you have another idea for an abstract shape. Just nicely fill your canvas. I make some bigger leaves and some smaller ones. Perhaps one over here. Maybe one more here. And then finally, you can drag in the color, use continue filling and tap all of these leaves to fill them. And there you have your abstract piece of art. Go ahead and vary with the colors, with the shapes, with the leaves, and perhaps you can turn this into an entire series. For the final project, I would like to show you how you can take a photo of a regular object and turn it into an art piece like this. First, take a photo like the simple photo of a bag and then lower the opacity of that photo. Let's set it to 30%. Then make a new layer on top by tapping the plus. And then with the studio pen, for instance, set to black, create outlines, but don't just create a very tidy outlines, but keep it a bit messy, a bit wonky, wobbly, add, add extra lines. Just make sure that it's not super tidy. We want nice organic lines, messy lines, sometimes some double lines because that will add the character to this piece. Make these stitch lines, but really don't make them too tidy. It's nice to create some multiple lines in some areas for that messy look. Let's try to keep it a bit organic. So embrace the wonkiness, the wobbliness. You really don't have to follow every single line. You can make your own picking. Until you have a line drawing like this. Then once you have this, you can turn off the photo and make a new layer underneath your awesome line art. Let's tap layer one first and tap plus, and then we'll grab that watercolor brush that we used for one of the other projects. So we'll go to the treasure chest brush pack and we'll find that round watery brush. And now let's first grab this color. First color that I have in that color palette. Opacity is at 100%. Let's set the size to, well, let's say 40. And without lifting your pen, put in that base color of this bag. And when your paint runs dry, of course, you do need to lift your pen. We'll try to keep it on your screen as much as possible. 
Then let's make the brush a little bit smaller, 20%. Add some blue here. And you can add some more blue, some darker blue in some shadow areas. Like on the left sides and on the undersides of this flap. Add some variety. Maybe some more blue at the bottom. And then let's switch to this darker blue, second color and add some darker shadows. Let's make the brush even smaller, 10%. Add some dark blue underneath here. And I'm lifting my pen a bit more often to create a bit of a messy look. The underside here. A little bit over here. And then let's switch to the fourth color. You can use that for more like golden details, like these buckles. Don't worry about going outside of the lines. It's nice to get that messy look. So that would be something like this. Of course, you can add a bit more blue if necessary, the first color. Some areas are a bit too light. And add some more blue touches. But it's nice to also have some lighter spots. Then let's add a little drop shadow on a layer underneath. So first tap layer one, then tap the plus, then grab this color, third color, and go underneath the bag and add a little drop shadow. Just with multiple strokes, make it nice and dark. And then finally, to add to the watercolor effect, go to the top of your layers and add a paper texture. Go to the wrench, and then to add, then to insert a photo, grab your favorite paper texture, and then zoom out a little bit, make sure it covers everything. Then set it to multiply in the layer menu by tapping the N, scroll up to multiply, Go to the magic wand, then to use saturation brightness, lower the saturation, turn up the brightness a bit. And there you have your watercolor piece of art based off a photo. Now I have taken you through 10 easy drawing projects. Which was your favorite? Let me know in the comments. If you want to follow another project, perhaps a bit of a longer one, then I think you might like this tutorial next. I would like to thank you for watching and I'll see you next time for the next tutorial.